All right, party people, let's get into it. Another wonderful day, another wonderful Thursday, and we're hanging out together. How does that sound? Let's go to the office, say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're having a great day at work. Warm-up vibe. Yeah, sure. Uh, we're going to do some warming up, and we're going to talk about it. Uh, so let me let me say hello to everybody who's here. Hello, Gertrudis. How you doing? Uh, AB. What's up, AB? Edgar's in the house. The usual crew. Assam. Hello, Assam. Zara. Hi, this is my first time to enter here online. What is the value of being alive as I can't understand what the difference is? Huh? Okay, that's a big question for me. I just kind of got here. I'm not really... Let's see. Zara, what is the first time? What is... First time being online. What is the value of life? Well, Zara, the answer, I actually know the answer to what is the meaning of life. So let me share that with you before we even get into it, before even drink coffee. The meaning of life is do whatever makes you feel like life is good. And that's it. Right? Just blew it up. Just blew up all your minds. That's the, the meaning of life is to give yourself a meaning of life. That's the meaning of life. There is no special thing out there. It's just make yourself happy, enjoy your life. I think enjoy your life. It's better than not enjoying your life. But I think that's, uh, that's fair. Do you guys agree with that? Do you think that's kind of the meaning of life is to give yourself a purpose and do that purpose? You tell me if I'm wrong. I feel like that's not a bad answer. I would be happy with that as the answer to what is the meaning of life. Give yourself a meaning and go do it. What do you guys think? Weigh in. Give me, give me some feedback on that. Tell me if I'm wrong. I feel like I'm, I'm not bad here. Ibrahim, what's up? Nicola, what's up? Lale, what's up? Lale, Lale. Pilar, the usual crew is here. My veterans are here. Lale's here. Gertrudis is here. Pilar is here. Uh, who else is in? Young me. Oh, we have a Korean in the house. Hello, Korea. Hello. Uh, what else we got? Hello. I'm sorry I can't read your name. I don't read Arabic. Uh, who else we got? JB's in the house. JB, it's right. It's happening all right now, buddy. Right here. We, we, we waited for you to be in the house, and now we can start. Uh, let's see, Tariq, what's today's lesson? Today's lesson, Tariq, is work. You know, we all have to do it, and we all have to do it, so you might as well find a job that you enjoy. That's that's a great idea. Pharma, hello, Pharma. Judith, hello, Judith, another I, another uh, smart veteran here, Judith, the crew. Ahmed's here, what's up, Ahmed? Uh, okay, so here we go. Uh, what else? Jose, what's up, Jose? Jose's in the house. Diego's in the house. Oh, you're in Rio, Diego. I'm super jealous now. I love Rio. Rio is great. Harun, she means live, not life. Oh, okay. <laughs> I gave a long answer about life. Well, I hope you enjoyed that answer. I think I've done enough work for today. I've told you the secret of life, so now I can go home. I'll see you later, guys. Have a great week. Bye-bye. No, just joking. Uh, okay, so uh, who else we got here? Raquel, Raquel. Oh, Raquel, it's a Spanish name, not a Brazilian name. Hello, Raquel from Bolivia. Carlos, what's up, my man? Alan, hello, hello. Mateus, what's up, brother? How are you doing? Albina, panic. Ahmed, laugh out louds. All right, here we go. All right, now I think we're good. We said goodbye, hello to everyone. I feel very white today. I need a tan. Can I come to one of your warm, sunny countries? and get a tan. I feel extra white today. Okay, so here we go. Let's jump into it. Let's talk about work. Uh, how our teacher, I'm from, so oh, happy to see you. Salam, salam, salam. Uh, let's talk about it. Let's jump into it, and let's talk about work today. So here we go. Let me share this document with you so you can have all the wonderful vocabulary that we talked about today. So we're going to talk about work. I'm going to ask you a few questions. So let's warm it up with a question of the day. Students love, students need a question of the day. I do need sunlight. You're right, Albina. You're not wrong. I, I can see how white I am. Now, keep in mind, there's some big lights here, which are giving me a little extra whiteness. But you're not wrong. I do need some sun. If you live in a sunny country, I will come. I will stay on your sofa, and we'll go get some sun together. Mm -hmm. I know, Nicola, but I also have to make it, you know, youtube -y, right? We want good light, not bad light. Let's see. Let's see if I can make myself a little bit. How about that? Is that better? It's a little darker. No, we need it. We want a good, clear quality. You know, keep it youtube -y. Okay, so let's jump into this. Uh, here we go. So the question of the day is this. Mm -hmm. This is a good one. 
I'm sure you've had one. Uh, so let's talk about it. So question of the day is, uh, talk about a job which you enjoyed in the past. What was the job and why did you like it so much? So give us, share us, a, give us a little story about the job you had and why you enjoyed it so much. Ooh, Philippines. Uh, I'm coming, Albina. I'm coming to the beach. I'm coming to hang out. So tell me, tell us about a job experience, a job you enjoyed in the past. What was the job and why did you enjoy it so much? Oh, teacher, go first. Okay, I'll go first. So uh, one job that I had in the past is I used to work for a grocery store. You guys know a grocery store, right? I don't know if it still exists, but it was a grocery, it was a normal grocery store. You know, one of these ones. And I used to work there and I used to work with some pretty crazy guys. And we had a warehouse in the back. Let me show you a picture of a warehouse. We had a warehouse like this. So it's got big aisles. You can see these rows here, really big. And th then, so sometimes we would do some stupid stuff in the back. And one of the things we would do is we would take a pallet jack. This is a pallet jack. See this thing? That's a pallet jack. And what we would do is we would put one person on the front and one person behind. And we had one, two people here and two people here. And basically we would have a race down one of these aisles, you know, these aisles that I show you. So we take this thing and we go down one of these big aisles, one on one side and one on the other. And one person behind me would push me. And then on the other side, another person was pushing the other. And we would run, 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 and then jump on and then go to the end and see who would win. That was a pretty fun job. I think I was 18 years old. I had a pretty good time at that job. I've had some other good jobs, but that one was really fun. That was a good first career. So that's what I that's what I did. So tell me about you. Tell me about a job you enjoyed in the past. Uh, what did you do? Why was it so awesome? What was the title? What were your responsibilities? Give us a little bit of detail about um, about what you did. Harun, hi. What is your name, sir? Don't call me sir. That's not my name. And where am I from? So my name's Kent, and I'm Canadian. And, and we're here in wonderful, look, I'm going to put some sunny Vancouver, because it's not really sunny these days. So I'm just going to pretend that it's sunny. Let's take a look at sunny Vancouver. Oh, yeah, there we go. See, that's the life we're living right now. All, you know, ocean and rivers and, you know, beautiful apartments. That's what it looks like every day. It doesn't look like that every day, but that's kind of what it looks like. All right, so you guys tell me about this. Uh, you, you want to try the job. You have to go back and work at a grocery store. Could be fun. Fedor, what's up, Fedor? All right, so yeah, give us, tell us about that. It was a little bit of dangerous fun. I like a little dangerous fun sometimes. I think everybody does. Uh, Ahmed, I've been working as a, a verifier in one of the unis in Iraq. All right, interesting. So a verifier, you check something, right? You make sure something's correct or something like that. Uh, Lolly's got one. When I was a, a bra maid. What's a bra maid? I enjoyed it because I met a lot of nice people. A barmaid. You want to say barmaid. So bartender maybe? Lolly? A bartender? You were mixing, mixing some drinks? Doing some flips and stuff like that? I'm guessing that's what... Uh, I'm not sure what the position is. If you were a bartender or a barmaid. A barmaid would take care of the glasses and the tables and stuff. And a bartender of course would make the drinks. She said yes, and I said two things, so I have no idea what, what the answer is. Uh, okay, so there we go. Bar, that would be a cool. Working in a bar would always be crazy, so I'm sure that was an interesting job. Anyone else got a job that you enjoyed in the past? I could just keep going and tell you about all the good jobs I've had in the past. I've had a few. Bartender. Okay, there we go. All right. Anyone else? Good job in the past. Bartender. Maybe one of your first jobs, you know, when you're just, I don't know, finishing school or high school. Those are, for me, those are always the most interesting jobs. Kind of when you're younger and you, you don't have as many responsibilities. Always more interesting. See, so yeah, it's got one. I worked when I was at school in a hotel. I really enjoyed that job because I got to meet a lot of people from different countries and cultures. Which is an awesome job, right? I, how can I say, I totally enjoy that's wrong. I absolutely love what I do because I get to meet people from around the world and that's super fun. You get to you get to meet some interesting characters and you share some ideas which are totally different from yours. It's it's an awesome thing. Go travel somewhere. Go study English abroad. It's a good experience. Come to Vancouver. Come hang out. We'll go for coffee. It'll be awesome. Maybe like Gertrudis did. You guys could come too. 
All right, so let's jump in. So what we're going to do, I'm going to introduce you guys to some new vocabulary that we use to talk about jobs. So we're going to do a little question and answer with you guys. We're going to look at some new vocab, and then after that, we're going to look at some we're going to look at some photos, and we're going to we're going to build some vocabulary about other things that can happen at work. So let's start with this one here. Let's jump into the warm up section. Uh, all right, and if you guys are new to the chat, Marktar, there you are. If you guys are new to the chat. The way we do this is I share this document with you and then you guys can basically make a copy of it and keep all the vocabulary that we got from it. So let me share it with you again. Noor, hello Noor, it's been a while. Uh, okay, so there it is, there's the document, open it up and let's go to number one. Let's take a look at the warm up. And let's talk about jobs. Alright, so here we go. So sometimes, sometimes these questions are about jobs and sometimes these questions are not about jobs. So you can kind of use it just to talk about your life. So the first question here uh, is this, is what is a difficult experience you got through? And what does got through mean? Okay, so this is a phrasal verb. If I say get through, uh, get through my exams, get through my breakup, get through something. So what does get through mean? This is the first word we're going to look at. So let's talk about that. Get through something. And if you see SMT, that means something. Okay, so this is a phrasal verb. What does it mean, get through? Hello. Hello, Pilar. You already said hello. Uh, so what does get through something mean? Uh, do you have another word that we can use to talk about this? And then I will explain if you, if you have one. Get through something. All right. No, get done, yeah, kind of, kind of get done. But listen to my example. So get through exam, yeah, there we go, Judith. All right, so get through my exams. Exams are difficult. Get through a breakup, a breakup is difficult. Get through life, life is difficult. So it kind of means overcome. So here's another one word you could use. Uh, or probably overcome is the best word. It's like handle. There we go. Denny's got it. Uh, so basically, like handle, handle a bad situation. You get through a bad situation. Very nice. Okay. So let's answer that question. What is a difficult experience that you got through in your life? Good, thing, good difficult experience. Mm, I'd probably say the first time when I went to teach English overseas. I went to Taiwan and I was 22 years old, and that was a difficult experience for me. I got through this. Uh, because I really wanted to work overseas and be independent and you know be away from mom and dad and try to travel more and do everything myself do my taxes myself get my visa myself so for me it was a it was kind of a difficult experience that I got through I succeeded in kind of living overseas and I did it for one year after about six months I wanted to come back to Canada I was pretty young but I got through one year in Taiwan because I wanted to finish one year I thought that was a cool I thought that would be a good accomplishment for me all right, so, okay, Ahmed, so have you got an answer? But give, tell us more, right? So I want you to use that, try to use this vocabulary in your answer, and then also explain a little bit more. So, yeah, you got through an illness in the past. What happened? Tell us a little bit of the story. So always explain your answers, use the vocabulary, and then try to give a little extra. So who's got one? A difficult experience that you got through. School, relationship, job. Perfect example. Um, period of time. You know, it could be it could be anything at all. Does anyone got one here? Got through? Maybe no one. No difficult experiences for anyone? Am I the only one who's had difficulties in life? I'm sure I'm not. I'm sure you guys have all had a few. So what, what would be the situation that you got through? Okay, there's one. Obina's got one. So you got through building a small house. That must have been challenging. So you built a house for yourself, and I'm sure that's got that has a lot of that would have a lot of problems right if you were doing that lots of details okay did you build the house yourself Albina all right here's Harun's got one now this is this is this is what we're talking about right so uh, get through Ooh, interesting um, so because it's get through uh, we want to use we don't want to say someone like a family member we want to say get through exams something or get through a a breakup it's a breakup is something so we want to use things we don't want to use people uh, if you want to use people for that sentence Harun you can say uh, I got over 
I got over a family member, a family member who passed away. So actually there's a little bit of a difference there. Get through something and get over someone, usually. Interesting. Uh, Amit, a psychopathic illness, but now I'm blessed, thank God. Okay, so I got, oh, I got through an illness. All right, so there's another thing you can get through as well. Pilar, a uh, difficult situation I got through. It was four years ago. I had surgery, uh, and it was difficult because I was alone. Definitely, right? It, it's, it's hard to be in the hospital when you don't have people around you, right? If you're kind of being independent or you're on your own in this situation. All right, all right, Albina, okay, built her own, uh, I hope it's on the beach, because when I come to visit Albina, uh, I would love to go to a beach, so I hope your house is on the beach. Lale, I'm a mental health nurse, and sometimes I have to get through violences. Um, what would we call those? I mean, so basically someone's, like a patient is becoming violent, so I have to get through hmm, physical violence or something like that at work, maybe something like that, so people are being violent. Uh, what else we got? Judith, when I started my professional job as a teacher, I was very young, and the student ages were very close to mine. My age, mine. Uh, I, have to, I had to gain their respect uh, throughout my job. Okay, so difficult situation. Uh, get through your job or get through a, you know, a time in your job or something like that. Uh, Rodrigo Gamer, uh, I got through, no with just got through, I got through a hard experience when I was robbed. Hmm, interesting. Uh, I got through, I got over, yeah, okay, alright, that'll work. Uh, what else we got? Uh, Raquel, yeah, it was a difficult experience because it was my first job after finishing university. Okay, there we go. Uh, Gertrudis, I remember that my more difficult experience was when I had to get, oh, oh my, oh my, uh, I, don't, I had to get an eyeball from a cadaver in a morgue, Oof, that would be difficult to get through, I would have difficulty getting through that, that's a, that's a serious one. All right, what else we got, Harun, get, get over or overcome. Or what else is correct for that sentence? So you overcome a problem, or you get over a problem, or sorry, uh, get through a problem, also correct. Um, those two, just those two. I don't know how, I don't think we have three, four different ways. You don't need three, four different ways. You just need kind of one good way to say it, and you can get through a problem in life. Uh, could we get through an obstacle? Yes, you could. O-B-S-T-A-C-L-A, you can. We get through an obstacle. Usually, I think in English, actually, we usually say get over an obstacle in life, but sometimes get through is correct as well. There's a weird difference between get through and get over. Get over someone, usually, like people. You get over an obstacle. Yeah, you can also get over an obstacle, but you can only get through something. You cannot get through someone. So maybe get through and get over can be the same, but get over can be a, a problem, a thing, and a person. That might be the difference between the two. What's up, Rodrigo? Come on in, buddy. We're talking about jobs. The good life working in Australia. That's the good life. All right, next one. Next question. New expression for you. Which job pays next to nothing in your country? And what does that mean, next to nothing? So do you think if I say, oh, my job pays next to nothing, do you think that means I make a lot of money or not a lot of money? And what do you think? Ziad's got another one. Ziad, once I was trapped inside a burning shack. Oh my goodness. I didn't think I would get out of there alive, so it took me a long time to get through. Oh, interesting. Get through that shock. Uh, that's, a, that's an interesting one. I would say get over that shock. Now, what's the difference between get through and get over? You get over something. Get through. I had to get, it took me a long time to get through that shock. That's interesting. I'm going to have to think about that, guys. Maybe I should give you a new one. Maybe I should use get over instead. It seems to be the easier of the two. Get through something. Let me, let me go down. I have a little vocabulary page which can help me. Let's see here. Get through something. Manage to complete a difficult task or deal with a difficult situation. Task or situation. And shock is not a task and not a situation. 
Well, it is. It is a situation. Get through that shock. Maybe it's okay. It just sounds a little weird. You know what? Um, get through or get over. There, there might be a little bit of a difference between the two. Maybe get over is actually a better expression. Uh, so maybe I'm going to change that. I'm going to go because it seems to be easier. So I'm going to change that one to get over. Uh, next one. So let's go into next one. Uh, I didn't mean to type get over. I think it would have been better. See? I think it actually sounds better saying get over. Uh, it just seems to be easier. Get through seems very specific. Uh, okay, so next one. Which job, maybe for example in your country, pays next to nothing? And what does next to nothing mean? Uh, almost no, like really not very low salary. If you, so if you, for example, if I say I make next to nothing. So you, you can say make and you can also say earn next to nothing and it's a collocation we use I guess it's a you earn next to nothing is it a collocation or an idiom I don't know call it a collocation uh, earn next to nothing means you make very low money so there we go so what's a job in your country so for example in Canada teachers some uh, not public school teachers but ESL teachers they don't make a ton of money in some jobs. Uh, some jobs you can make pretty good money, but sometimes it's difficult. Um, if you work in a coffee shop, you might make next to nothing, right? Or if you're not Canadian and you're from another country and you work for some companies, they might pay you next to nothing. It's probably illegal, but I'm sure it happens everywhere, right? Hmm. Let's see what you guys got. Uh, so, Rodrigo, the most next to nothing is unemployed. Well, yeah. Um, okay, so w tell us about a job. What's a job in your country where you make next to nothing? Which job pays next to nothing in your country? Janitor, coffee shop, coffee shop in Canada. There's a lot of uh, students who work at coffee shops because I guess regular Canadians, there's, they don't want to do these jobs. Maybe the, low, maybe the pay is too low. So garbage collector so in in Canada garbage collector is good money it's actually a really good job so that's that's an interesting difference and I'll tell you a little secret I'll tell you a little secret that I know if any of you know how to do this you could be rich in Canada all right so I'm gonna, I'm gonna this is a big secret this is like useful like the meaning of life I told you earlier uh, dog hair style dog hair stylist all right, so this is a job. Now, don't look at that dog. And probably not this dog either. That's not a good example. But see this? See what's going on here? See this little cutie right here? If you know how to cut hair, and you know how to cut dog's hair, and you can do a good job, you can come to Canada, and you can make a boatload of money. Yeah, that's true. I met somebody, and she cuts hair dog's hair in Canada and you would not believe how much money she makes she made me contemplate learning how to cut dogs hair. I like animals I love dogs but she makes a ridiculous amount of money you would have you have no idea way more than Barbara's Ahmed you have a, if you want let's play a game guess try to guess how much this girl makes cutting dog hair just per month Canadian dollars per month can I cut can I cut my hair for free? Can you cut my hair for free? Yeah, I think it's time. Sure. Sure, Emma, do it. You can cut come over here, please cut my hair for me. Or if you are in a warm country, I'll come visit you and you can cut my hair there. It's getting a little long. It's getting could be a little. Ooh, Zia, you're pretty good. That's pretty close, but you're not right. It's actually too low. This is how much money she made in one month cutting hair. Uh, much, much too low, Ahmed. Much, much too low. Ziad was close. Remember, this is dog, just dog's hair, making a dog look pretty, doing a good job, making that dog not feel stressed. Have I been to Guam? No, I've never been to Guam. Hatem, way too low. Uh, but I know a lot of Japanese people like to go to Guam. Uh, are you from Japan, Emma? Uh, maybe, I, but I lived in Japan, so maybe. 15,000 Zia too high, Rodrigo too low. The, the correct answer was approximately $10,000. $10,000 for cutting the dog's hair. Yeah, that's right. So if you want to come to Canada, 
have a good job and a very, very, very good lifestyle, you should learn how to cut the dog's hair and then come to Canada, okay? You're welcome. You're welcome for this amazing information. Uh, tattoo? No, thank you, Harun. No, thank you. Not, I'm still, still thinking about that one. Okay, it is impressive. So if you guys are interested, learn how to cut dog's hair and then come to Canada and you will have an amazing lifestyle. You're welcome for that free information. See, we do more than just teach English here. We teach you how to improve your lifestyle. Okay, so now we're, she's very good. She's very good. She, she sends little texts of, to the parents, to the dog mama and dog papa as well. Uh, newer, it's $10,000. The number was $10,000. All right, so here we go. Let's jump into the next one. Ah, this is a good one. This is good. It is a lot of money. Number three, let's jump into another one. Number three, take a look at number three on your paper. Uh, this one is definitely about work. The question is, does your boss ever give you a hard time? Uh, is there some place where you can get trained to do this job? I don't know the answers yet, uh, but I'm sure if with a little hard work and a little research, you could find a place where, where you could learn. I'm sure if you become a good hairstylist, you could learn how, you could figure out how to do dog's hair, but uh, I'm sure with a little research, you can figure it out and become a dog hairstylist in Vancouver, BC, and make a killing. Collocation of the day, make a killing. Let's put that in our list, shall we? Make a killing. So make, it's kind of the opposite of make next to nothing, it's make a killing which means uh, make a lot of money. So that's definitely an idiom. Make a lot of money. So I made a killing on the stock market. Or I made a killing cutting dog's hair. Boom. There you go. In Vancouver, of course. Don't do it in Japan. Apparently there's no money in Japan. But if you come to Vancouver, there's tons of cash. All right, here we go. Next one. Uh, Rodrigo gives himself a hard time. All right, there we go. Uh, Hatem, you're a student, you're the boss of yourself. Well, that's a nice way to think about it. Uh, number three, does your boss give you a hard time? And what does that mean, give you a hard time? What does it mean uh, to use that collocation together? Uh, let's see here. All right, so we got a few answers. Uh, huh, 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 huh. Oh my God, Sherlock, it's 6 a.m. there. I appreciate you being here, I really do. Thanks for staying up with us or, or waking up early or whatever you did. Pilar's got always answers when he needed a uniform just immediately. So basically your boss said, I need a uniform, make it or something like that. Maybe that could work. Albina's a boss, all right. So Albina, do you give your employees a hard time? And what does it mean, um, demonetize, what does it mean give a hard time? Um, so for example, let's, let's put this here give someone. SMB is somebody a hard time. Uh, a hard time. So what does it mean? It basically means um, create trouble for someone. Okay, so for example, like, oh, Kent, you're, you know, you're, you need to do this on time. You have this to do and you have to do that now. And you know, you know. Oh, you were you were one minute late yesterday. You need to be on time every day. You have to be more professional. Blah 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 blah. Give you a hard time. Create some trouble for you. Usually, but oh yeah, teachers do that. I I always create a hard time for my students because they're in my class, right? So that's that's their choice. You made the wrong choice coming into Ken's class. So of course, I'm gonna kick some butt, right? And give the students a hard time, especially. The good students, I don't really give them a hard time. You guys are pretty good students, I don't give you a hard time. But the bad students, if the bad students don't come to class, and then you know they skip and they skip, and then finally they come to class, oh, I remember that, I remember. And I give them a hard time, I say like, you know, I just give them some trouble. They walk into class, they're like, oh, oh, you wait, your name is, oh, what's your name again? Oh, I saw you, but I saw you like so long ago, maybe one year ago, your name was, uh, Shirley, no, no, Shelly, no, and this goes on for about two or three minutes until I feel I have made them feel guilty enough and then I stop and then I allow them to, to come into class. So you don't want to be late for Kent's class uh, physically. 
you guys are okay because this is all online and I can't see you walk in the door. But if I did, poof, there'd be trouble. Okay, so who gives you a hard time? So maybe this is not about your boss. There we go. My customers give, not make, but give me a hard time. My mother gives me a hard time. My father gives me a hard time. My brother gives me a hard time. So it doesn't have to be about work. Maybe we'll just make this one general. Who gives you a hard time? Who gives you a hard time? And when? And why? Okay? My brother, my mother, my boss, all those things. Anybody? Uh, so customers give me a hard time. Carlos could be a nag or could nag me. Yeah, use nag as a verb. Okay. All right, let's see. I'll scroll down. If you guys got an answer, you throw it up there. Next one, number four. <clears throat> oh, here we go. Rodrigo, my wife sometimes gives me a hard time. Ha, ha, ha. All right, number four. Do you ever get behind with work? Now, what does that mean, get behind? Uh, take a guess on that. So, can you hit the nail on the head? So, my mom always gives, gives me a hard time. Textbooks give me a touch time. No touch time, Hatem, just a, a hard time. Uh, usually people give you a hard time as well. Uh, Judith, I was very fortunate because I always had a very good boss who had a good heart or a big heart and loved their colleagues' uh, hard work. Good. Good for you. That's lucky. That's lucky. My boss is pretty good too. She doesn't give us too much of a... Just sometimes she gives us a hard time, but it's usually... It's usually deserved. Uh, Noor, our boss gave us a hard time when we often went to the restroom. Were you going to the restroom too often, Noor? Like just too many times? Or do you think it was, it was okay? Uh, Lolly, my parents gave me a hard time because I didn't obey them. You know, I, I understand, Lolly. I can totally relate to you. Obina, Fedor gives me <laughs> a hard time when he doesn't listen to me. Fedor, listen to Albina all the time. Don't give her a hard time. Uh, Zia's on the next one here. Yeah, I always have to catch up on, I always have work to catch up on. Perfect. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Emma, my husband gives me a hard time. Yep, that happens. Uh, and Harun, nobody gives, has given me a hard time, but life isn't made to be easy. So, Nobody has given me a hard time. That's good. That's kind of a good thing. Hmm. Okay. Next one. So we're on the next one here. Number four. Let's try this one one more time. And then I think we can jump in. And I'm going to get you guys to help me out. Find some new vocabulary here. So number four is this. Do you ever get behind with your work? So what does that mean? Get behind. Uh, so let's say if you, if you take a break from work and you go on vacation you might get behind with work. Uh, basically, you, when you come back to work, you have a lot of jobs to do because you took a one week vacation. So get behind means you have to, you are, so here's your job, you should be here. But actually you're down here because you took a vacation, so now you are behind, you, you got behind. So usually you get behind with something. Uh, get behind with work. Get behind with homework. Get behind with your exams. No, not exam. Sorry. Get behind with your studies. Get behind with something. Usually jobs. Get behind. So it's an idiom. How can I explain get behind? It means you... There's another idiom we use is catch up. Yeah, you catch up. So I got behind in work, so I have to catch up. Catch up, become the same level again, so I'm not behind. It's really difficult to explain. Get behind means have extra work to do, maybe. That might work. Uh, okay, what else we got here? Okay, not finish something. I never get behind with my work and not, okay, so maybe I never get behind with my work, comma, not even any, huh? nothing, maybe just nothing. Get behind, give a hand. Uh, give a hand means help and get behind uh, just means you have extra work to do. Uh, that's a good one. Let's put that one on there. Give a hand means help. Uh, so do you usually give a hand to other people at work? Good question as well. Give a hand means help. That's another way to say help. 
Nice one. Because of a break. Um, not necessarily because of a break. Maybe just you're lazy, so it's possible you could get behind with work because you are lazy. But a good reason to get behind work is because you took a vacation. You took a break, so you have more work, more work, more work, right? So you get behind with work. You are not, you are not up to speed. That's a new one for you, up to speed. Uh, let's add that one, up to speed. Up to speed. So, for example, are you up to speed at work? Maybe your boss, your boss needs to bring you up to speed. And up to speed means um, tell you all the. Make sure you know all the information. Tell you all the current information. Tell somebody all of the new current information needed. Okay, so like let's say you join a meeting and you're a little bit late. So somebody might have to tell you, oh, we talked about this, we talked about that, we talked about that. So that person brings me up to speed, basically up to date, similar to up to date. Yeah, basically the same idea. There we go, same idea. Good, very nice. Uh, all right, let's see. A couple questions here. Sir Ken, if we don't improve ourselves, V E S, in a good way to learn English with you, it's a certainty that we'll get behind our goals. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Sir Ken. You're right. All of these examples are informal. Yeah, pretty much, right? Most of these are informal because they're they're kind of idioms, right? And we use a lot of idioms for informal situations. Uh, natural speaking. So yeah, definitely informal. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, get behind with work, yes. Okay, there we go. Gertrudis was behind with work. All right, very nice. Procrastinate, yes, up to date. All right. <laughs> okay, so let's do, let's jump ahead here. So I'm going to just go through these ones, and then you can make some sentences, and I'll check them as well. So I'm not going to talk about all these because I want, I want to get into another activity. So let me just burn through this vocabulary. Number five. Which person in your life always stands by you? And stands by you is another way to say helps you, supports you. Stand by somebody. Uh, so I guess it's a phrase, let's call it a phrasal verb. Uh, stand by you means supports you. Supports somebody or helps somebody. That's a good one. So who stands by you at work or who stands by you in your life. That's a good good way to say supports me, helps me all the time. Another one, uh, number six, if you look at that, have you ever been turned down for a job? Uh, what does turn down mean? Turn down means um, you applied for the job but the company said no. They said nope, sorry, we like you but you don't have enough qualifications or enough experience. Turn someone down means reject. So it's, again, it's a phrasal verb, and it means reject someone. And it could be, it's not only for jobs, you can also use it for, you know, um, so for example, oh, I saw this pretty girl on the street, and I just had to talk to her, and I said, oh, do you have a telephone number? And she said, no, I'm sorry, I have a boyfriend. So, or she said, no, I'm sorry, I don't want to talk to you. That's possible. And, and she turned me down. She said no to me. Can you believe that? What a, what a, what a tough day. Uh, so turn someone down could be for people or it could be for jobs. It's kind of like rejection. So that's a good one as well. It doesn't feel good, but it's a good thing to say. Uh, number seven, does your boss check up on you? And this is not only for bosses. Maybe your parents check up on you. So let's put that one in there. Check up on somebody. So another phrasal verb. Uh, so basically it means your parents Uh, monitor, do you know monitor? Like supervise you? Sometimes. Okay, so so for example, like uh, let's say um, let's say you go to Vancouver to let's say you're a young person and you come to Vancouver to study English. Sometimes your mother and the father they're gonna call you, they're gonna be like, Are you okay? Is everything okay? Alright, do you have enough money? 
Are you made it, are you making making friends something like that? So your parents are checking up on you. They're like, are you okay? Is everything okay? So check up on somebody. So your mother checks up on you. Your father checks up on you. You check up on other people, right? So you kind of just maybe call or talk to them and just see is everything okay? All right. So there we go. Uh, let's check a few of your sentences here. Uh, Judas got one. When I was a child, my parents. Uh, mm -hmm. My parents were behind me, and after uh, after I got married, my husband filled, ED, filled this role, okay? But remember, get behind is like you have a lot of work to do. Were behind is like support. Uh, Rodrigo, my mom, always stands by me. Good mother, you should keep her. Ahmed, all my family always gets my back, no up. That's a different expression. Ziad, my brother always stands by and supports me. Perfect. Uh, Denny's, uh, my relatives always stand by me. Awesome. Uh, Hatem, parents are peak supporters. Parents always stand by you. Uh, Dale, is it possible to change stand by with go to bat for you? Um, it's a little different. So your parents stand by you, they support you, they help you. If someone goes to bat for me, it's kind of it it is support but it's a little bit different it's like so for example let's say let's say my boss doesn't like me and like you know that Kent's a lazy guy I don't think he does any work anytime uh, he's having too much fun he's not working but then my co-worker says wait a second wait a second Kent he does some work I've seen him do some work uh, he does this with his students and he does that so my friend goes to bat for me basically my my friend is helping me when when I need help so he's saying something about me for me does that make sense so that's the difference between stand by me is like all the time but go to bat for me is when somebody's saying bad something bad about me so my friend says something good about me that's a little bit different all right so <laughs> Noor I do feel like I'm, I am getting behind with smart class. Yes, no, you have to come all the time. You gotta come. We expect you all the time. Uh, Albina Fedor stands, stands by me while we had building, while we were building, maybe building something. Uh, Ivan, and check your history in browser. Okay. Hmm. Uh, I check up on. Don't forget, Assam, check up on myself. You need the on in that expression. Okay. Da, 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 da. I have a possible upcoming appointment for a job and I hope that I hope that the company doesn't turn me down good sentence all right very nice your uh, my mother always stands by me giving me some money even when I'm married yep that's what mothers do Raquel uh, they just keep supporting you it's like yeah you know you know how old I am mom they're like ah so you're you're always your mother's child right it never changes Gertrudis, your boss is ins insolent, I-N-S-O-L-E-N-T, and I don't know if that's for me. Uh, I'm not sure. My boss is not insolent. She's quite lovely, actually. And if you want, I can show you a photo of her. Let me show you a photo of her. This is my boss. That's my boss. Her name is Claire. See? Right there. There she is. That's what she looks like if she were animated. One of the students did this for our, a lot of the teachers, so maybe let me take them in and show you some of the teachers at my school. Here's another one, his name's Daniel, he's vegan, he doesn't eat meat. That's Daniel right there, it's pretty nice, right? Uh, everybody loves uh, a couple of these guys, everybody loves this teacher because he's Matt, and he thinks he's the sexiest teacher, but he's not, he's definitely not, he just has a cool beard, and he has clashes. And here's another one, this is one of our other rock star teachers, his name's JP, and yes, that's right, he has a Hello Kitty mug and the last one, I don't know who this guy is, but he's also one of the teachers there. And there he is. And he has a Brazil cup. So that's how. And he always listens to music in class. What a cool guy. Very nice. So there we go. There's a few of the people I work with. All right. So let's keep going here. Uh, okay. Do, 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 do. I always check up on my dog because they're naughty. Good idea. My boss is a cartoon. Yeah. Actually, you know what? All of us are cartoon characters because we... We are not your traditional, like, okay, class, now we have to do work. We don't do that. We, uh, we're a little bit more easygoing, and I think students like it. Uh, do I have Sean? No, because Pilar, that's a different school. Uh, the school that I'm showing you 
is the school that I work at in the morning, not at this school. So I actually don't really work at this school too often. I actually work at another school. So unfortunately, we don't have Sean in that one. Noor, I like people who stand by others who have experienced bullying. That's a little bit of a difficult. Uh, what is my cartoon? What, what is it? It's me. My cartoon is me. It's just me. Uh, animated. That's kind of what I would look like if I was animated. You can see there's some music there and my nickname, if you didn't know, is Kento. It's a Japanese nickname that I kind of adopted because it sounds cool. But I always have a Brazilian cup with me. So that's kind of my, my trademark. Alright, very nice. Uh, I hate to check up on somebody. Don't forget the on there, Albina. Gertrudis, the last one. Yes, Kent, the last one. I was the last one. Yeah, that was me. All right, let's go. Let's keep going here. I got one more to go through. Uh, last one. Have you ever felt great? Number eight. Have you ever felt great about handing in your notice? What does that mean, handing in your notice? So let's write that one down. Hand in your notice. What exactly does that mean? I imagine it's a collocation. No, oh, maybe an idiom. I don't know. Okay, so hand in your notice, what does it mean? Have you ever handed in your notice? Uh, it basically means quit. So hand in your notice. You say, okay, so today I'm quitting, here's my two weeks or whatever you do, and you give it to your boss. Carlos, there he is, the, the, the smart star. There he is, get in here, Carlos. Excellent mug, Brazil is the best country. Brazil's pretty awesome, Carlos, I'll be honest with you, I'm a big, I'm a big Brazilian fan for sure. Uh, Harun, Kent, Kent with a Z, Kento, Kentinho, no, Kentinho, maybe, maybe that, that sounds like a Brazilian thing, uh, but I think in Portuguese my name would be Kent. Uh resignation is correct, Judith, so hand in your notice is resign. So here's what I want to do, I want to do a few more things, and I want to, I want to spitball, I want to brainstorm some ideas, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a picture, and then I want you to tell me, and everybody, what's happening in this photo okay it's going to be a work photo and i want you to think what's happening in this person's mind or what's happening in the workplace environment and we're going to talk about some vocab that we can use to describe uh, a brazilian mug to drink colombian coffee i think it is colombian coffee Rodrigo. i think you're right so we're going to use these photos and we're going to describe what's happening in the photo and we're going to take out some new vocab that we can use to talk about work so let's do that let's jump in so let's take a look at things that happen at work. And I'm going to try to find some interesting photos. And you tell me <laughs> what's happening in the photo. All right, so here's the first photo. Oh, come back here, come back. This is the first one. So what is happening in this photo? This is a work photo. Something happened. Some, this is something which happens at work. Uh, what's going on in this photo? Two guys, it looks like they both got a cookie. Uh, what is the situation? What is that guy thinking? What is that guy thinking? What's the situation that's happening at work? This one is, I can't really think of too much work vocabulary for this situation, but I, I kind of thought it was funny. In my school, we have a zone. It's called the vulture zone. Do you know what a vulture is? A vulture is a bird like this. This is a vulture. So at our school, we have a vulture zone. So basically, if you put food, if you put food on the teacher's desk, that's the vulture zone. Basically, if there's a cookie there, it will be gone. One of the teachers at my school will eat it. It's called the vulture zone. Don't put your food in the vulture zone unless you want your food to disappear. Okay? So there we go. So here's the situation. What's going on here? What, could, what kind of stuff? And again, you can use some of the vocabulary that we talked about today. Or we can try to create new, so you can explain your idea, and I'm going to do my best to try to give you the English way uh, of s describing the situation. Uh, it looks like, I want to say fighting over. It's almost like they're fighting over the last cookie. Hmm, what's going on? Greediness, yeah, there is. There's a bug on his cookie? Yeah, I guess that's possible. Uh, did you buy this cookie or did you make it? Hmm, maybe. He's questioning. Here's a new word. So question can be a verb. So question something or someone. So maybe he's doing that, asking a question. Did you make this cookie? He's questioning, right? So maybe that's something that could be happening there. 
I'll be honest, this is not the best one. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna take a new photo and let's look at the new one here. Okay, let's go to another one. Let's find another work photo that's a little better. Uh, what do we got here? Kent is informal way of a word friend in Russian. Really? Oh, that's nice. I like it. And uh, okay, so Kent is an informal way of saying friend in Russian. So, so if I meet a Russian person, I'm gonna say Kent, and they'll be like, ah, they'll be like, good guy. That's awesome. And Kent is in Brazil in Portuguese is like hot hot temperature not hot and sexy just hot temperature unfortunately why did you take my cookies the boss tastes tastes the employees cookies to make sure they're good to sell there's a hair in them okay all right I'm gonna change I'm gonna change this I feel like there's better oh this one's good what's happening here now some of this might be about work some of this might not be a work but when I was in high school the teacher would give us the teacher would give us a hard time if we were passing love notes in class so pass passing love notes maybe you pass some love notes at work mm, well maybe you got a you know a little interest at work pass love notes so that's a qualification give someone a note which which is how do I explain a love note which says something nice says something romantic that's what it is I think that's what's going on here there's a little how can I explain this in English there's a little what's going on an office relationship we have a way to explain this in English I just can't think of it so they're passing love notes okay obviously that's not a real photo right that's a but what's going on how would we describe it like two people are dating at work but they don't want other people to know about it. Uh, what would you say about that? A secret relationship? And yeah. I'm sure there's a way to say it in English. I just can't think of it right now. They are flirting. Yes, there's a good word there. Flirting with each other. Passing love notes. Secretary. Ooh, an affair. An office affair. That's thank you, Lolly. You got it. An office affair. So an affair is when you cheat on your husband or your wife. Uh, but an office love affair okay so this is not a good I don't recommend you do this this is not a nice thing they would suck for sure but maybe that's what's happening in this photo we're just using our imagination it's an office love affair so basically one you know one husband or one wife basically cheating on their husband or wife with another person so a secret a secret relationship office love affair that's possible that could be happening flirting behind the door <laughs> flirting behind the door under the desk or something like that yeah uh, okay all right that's true they do get along they do get along well yes it is a no-no and that's the word of the day Harun you're right uh, office relationships are a no-no and if you didn't learn that word before learn it now uh, something is a no-no and a no-no is don't do it it's bad so something is a no-no is an awesome call it and it's fun to say no-no uh, which basically means something is not allowed or bad uh, there we go something is not allowed or bad taking the taking the last cookie from the bag and then leaving the bag on the table is a no-no don't do that I almost did that today all right so there we go very nice word of the day Harun very nice no no uh, I guess he doesn't know what is going on uh, what is going what he is going to get from the co-worker oh my Ooh, a home wrecker maybe she is a home wrecker she destroys the homes that's a good word let's add that one a home wrecker is somebody who destroys your first you know if you are married and you have a wife or a husband but then uh, you have a, another partner, boy or girl, a mistress or a mister, I guess. A uh, homewrecker is someone who destroys your house, destroys your, your family relationship. All right. Let's jump ahead. Let's do another one. 
let's see, what happens at work? Hmm. Okay, let's talk about this one because there's some good stuff we can pull from it. What are these girls doing here? Do you think these girls are working right now? I'll be honest, that doesn't look like work to me. What do we call it? How do we explain the situation in English? We say these girls are not working, they are doing what? How do you explain that? Give me some words. The first word that comes to mind is goofing off. Goof off. So goof off means not working. You are fooling around. Fool around. So there's two meanings there. They are fool around or goof off. Uh, they're both phrasal verbs and they both mean not working. Uh, not working when you should be. You should be working but you are not. Not working when you should be. And both of them have the same meaning. They are goofing off. They are wasting time. They are fooling around. They're not working. That's definitely what's going on there. They're gossiping, definitely. Yeah, that's another one. Harun, brainstorming session with Kent. Yeah, it is a brainstorming session. We're we're spitballing here. We're creating, we're creating, we're looking at the situation, and then we're gonna pull out some vocabulary that we can use to talk about work. So this is perfect because they are goofing off, they're not working. So we can use goof off or fooling around to talk about when you are not working. They are trolling someone's YouTube channel. Yeah, this is a good word, and I don't use this word, but let's add that one. That's a very nice one, Rodrigo. Trolling someone, troll someone. And I, I think it basically means, um, it basically means that you're making jokes, yeah? Let me, I, let me, I gotta do, oh, there's that dog. Troll, meaning. No, not that troll, troll someone, meaning. I think it just means tease, right? Like make jokes, Urban Dictionary. Trolling does not mean just making rude remarks, shouting, swearing, someone. No, no. Why is it called trolling? A troll or a troller is internet slang when someone starts arguments or upsets people by posting off-topic or extraneous messages in some type of online community. Their goal is to cause people to get emotional and to harass people online. The word trolling is a word commonly used to describe a method of phishing. Okay, so trolling is, that's, they're, they're probably not trolling, but troll someone means to put uh, negative comments online so other people become emotional. Okay, so basically, if I put something on Facebook and why did I put that on Facebook is because I want other people to become crazy. I, I just put this because I want other people to become crazy. So that, I think, would be the definition of trolling. And that's a new word. That's a buzzword these days. I think it's already getting old, but I don't always know. I, know, I don't always know the new stuff, I'll be honest with you. Uh, but there we go. Trolling someone, that's what it means. Stalking. I guess they could be stalking. They don't look like they're stalking, uh, but they do look like they're laughing. They're having a laugh at something. Maybe they're looking at somebody's Facebook profile or some online photo or something like that. I guess they could be stalking. Mm, what else we got? They're gossiping about colleagues. Uh, one of the things that happens to me uh, is my face, there, there may be, they, oh, here's what they, they might be hacking hack somebody's social media. Have you ever, have your friends ever hacked your phone? And, and I don't mean like computer hack, but just basically I forgot to close my Facebook and then my, my office coworkers, those lovable misfits, they put on Facebook that I got married and I got so many replies like, oh my God, Ken, you got married, that's crazy. And some people, I hadn't talked to them for three years they texted me like, really, you got married? And you didn't, you know what I mean? So they got me good, they got me good. They ha They just, basically I left my Facebook open at work and sometimes when we see someone's Facebook open at work, we like, ha, ah, <laughs> I'm gonna get get this guy for, you know, don't leave your Facebook open at work. So you, so I got my Facebook hacked and they uh, posted some funny stuff on there. Those coworkers I showed you, they're lovable misfits, uh, troublemakers for sure. Uh, we all we all give each other a hard time. Hack somebody's social media account. Okay, so that's a qualification. Uh, 
you know, use another person's account or put something funny, all right? Anyways, you get the idea. I'm not going to explain that one, but there we go. Okay, cool. And I think we've got time for one more. Let's do one more before we shut it down for today. Uh, let's see here. One more office situation. Mm -hmm. Things that happen at work. Let's take a look at bad bosses. Things that happen at work. Boss. Let's see if we can get a boss photo. All right. Ooh, here we go. This one. Oh, come back here. Let's do this one here. Oh, this there's so there's actually so many good things to talk about. So let me give you a few here. Look at this girl. Now, I don't know about you, but do you think this girl is paying attention? I don't think so. I think she is zoning out or spacing out. So here's a good one. So zone out or space out. Basically, you are not listening. You look, you, you're like, like that. You're not really listening. You are thinking about something else. So sometimes in English we say that person is zoning out or space. Space, your brain is in space, space out. Basically, not paying attention. Not paying attention when you should. That's a good one. And one more I wanted to do uh, was this one here. There was one more here. Uh, this, where was it? There was a boss, and one boss was screaming at another person. I wanted that one. This one. Okay, I got a couple expressions, useful expressions. What's going on here? Now, this is not a real photo. Of course, these people don't look like real workers. But what's happening in this photo? One boss is screaming at the other. So I'm going to teach you a really... Should I teach you that one? I shouldn't teach you that one. I will write it, but I'm not going to explain it. So your homework is to find out what does this mean. So that boss is okay, and that's all I'm going to write. I'm not going to tell you what that means. Your homework is to find out what that means. Question, question, question. Uh, zone out z-o-n-e so I always zone out of my class okay there we go don't pay attention yes the person is traveling similar Carlos exactly uh, in English we say spacing out this person is spacing out or yesterday I spaced out Dale not bad blowing a gasket is good uh, that's a good good combination blow a gas blowing blow your top blow one's top this is a little bit old. I want to give you the cool stuff. So um, the one I gave you is useful. Anything else we could say about this? Yeah, she's freaking out. And I think you guys know this one, maybe. Freak out is like going crazy. So freaking out. She is the boss. Freaking out is going crazy. And you could say going crazy as well. Uh, and maybe one more. Give it to someone. Somebody. Uh, giving it to someone. Telling. Telling. Yeah, spazzing is a good one, Dale. Very nice. Telling somebody. Mm, kind of uh, easy way. Screaming. Scream at somebody. Uh, no, not screaming. You give it. So, for example, oh, my boss gave it to me yesterday. It's like uh, throwing a fit, kind of. Uh, give it to somebody means tell somebody. Say many bad things. Say many bad things about someone. That's the only way I can explain. Yeah, so, so if I look at this, if I want to describe it, say, oh, man, you know that the boss, the boss is giving it giving it to her like she's getting in trouble so the boss is giving it the boss is acting like an a-hole yes that's also true she's boiling uh, spazzing out Dale that's a good one I'll add that one as well spaz out that's a good that's an old school word spaz we used to call when I was in high school we would call people oh you're a spaz you're like crazy you're a spaz out similar to going crazy 
little crates. Okay, so there we go. Very nice. So, taught a few new things to talk about work. We should have done a little bit more with these photos because there's so much we can talk about with these photos, maybe for another day. So there we go. A few new ways that you can use to talk about work. Things you should do, things you shouldn't do. Get through something or get over something. I'm, I have to learn the difference between those two because I don't know the answer. Um, make or earn next to nothing. Make a killing, make a lot of money. Give somebody a hard time, sure. Uh, get behind with something, give a hand, up to speed, get up to date, stand by. So lots of good stuff we can use. Sometimes we can talk about work with this stuff and sometimes we can talk about just normal life situations with this stuff. So, so there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got some useful vocab. Some of that's pretty fun stuff so you can use it to describe any sense. Uh, homo? I don't know about that word. Dude. Be careful with that word. Uh, might be a different meaning in English. Uh, okay, so there we go. Um, but yeah, all these things you can use to talk about work, and that is awesome. <laughs> Harun, now you're just kind of squeezing in your vocab. Is she going to give her an uppercut or a sucker punch? Probably not. That's workplace violence, and that's illegal in Canada. So there we go. Don't hit your coworkers. That's the rule of the day. Don't beat your coworkers. Students, I'm not sure. Could be a gray area. I think their grammar would be better if I could hit them a little bit, but the law says no, so what can I do? All right, everybody, have yourselves a great day. We'll be back. I will be scheduling the times for next week. Monday, 3.30 p.m. Vancouver time, and Thursday, 2.30 uh, p.m. Vancouver time. I will put it on the YouTube website, and it will be correct. Mark my words. It's going to be correct. We'll see you guys on Monday. Have yourselves an amazing weekend. Keep it smart, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.